Hey everybody, in this video what I'd like to do is look closer at the Fane CD131 compression driver. In the previous video this is one of four compression drivers that I had tested and I had mentioned how I had misplaced this one. I had found it in my uh, bedroom closet where I store some of my drivers. Anyways, uh, always trying to find a safe place to store stuff with kids and cats around. So anyways, um, so what I want to do is look at the stock compression driver and also look at the one that I had modified by cutting the big hole in the back of it and looking at the difference that the hole makes and also with the adding of the foam. And I can play some music too and I'll have some other tests that I'm going to do. Um, namely, I'm going to try to lower the resonance of the driver so that I can uh, use it down to 600 hertz for um, an audio file type application. So, um, so I have my computer here, my DATS uh, speaker tester, DATS V2 uh, software, but I'm running the, the regular V1 uh, DATS tester. So um, here we have the, the impedance curve data and you can see here there's actually um, some breakup in the diaphragm up up really high so this is this is at 17 and a half kilohertz so just for memory's sake here we have um, a large uh, resonance at 1.1 kilohertz and then the main diaphragm resonance is at uh, 537 hertz okay so looking at the frequency response um, I have the scale set for 60 dB um, in the in the uh, in the vertical and then I have my frequency response from 500 to 20 kilohertz so the the response actually looks really good um, the what I pointed out earlier the breakup is actually showing up as a large spike up extremely high in the frequency response so I'm just pointing that out because um, spoiler alert when we go to the the rear hole um, it's still there <laughs> yeah um, the rear hole doesn't really change much um, especially when you look at the the spectrogram data so I've changed the spectrogram to show logarithmic in the in the x-axis or in the horizontal um, so you can see here yeah we these are the two impedance peaks you can see them as as resonances and and then over here you can see the breakup that's occurring so just for those who aren't aware this um in the vertical axis is time and and then still the horizontal is is frequency so we're actually looking at the time domain aspect of the of the compression driver so um the initial burst of the sound and then how quickly the driver decays at the specific frequencies so it'll be equivalent to like the way an instrument um, will resonate at certain frequencies. This is the same thing. It's you don't want resonance, but um, you can't really help it with a with a dynamic driver of this type. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting too how in the frequency domain you can see here how you know this is a symptom of something that's happening in the time domain like I mentioned in the previous video. And a lot of people will try to deal with these issues with EQ, um, but that's like going to the doctor and complaining of a wheezing sound in your chest. And the doctor says, well, just wheeze quieter, right? You can't really, you're just treating the symptom. Um, you're not really treating the actual root cause of the problem which is occurring in the time domain and we can see that it's breakup and stored energy as a result of that breakup. So going to, um, I did the, the third test here I did with the foam placed into the back of the hole and so we'll look at the frequency response again. So the one thing that I can deduce that the foam has achieved is taming the breakup that we were seeing earlier. So if we look at the spectrogram results, you can see that it's virtually disappeared. 
So in that regard, yeah, the foam is definitely an improvement. So <clears throat> in other places in the spectrum, like like uh, from 2K up to like 8K, there really isn't much of an improvement. So if we actually look at the impedance curve for the one with the foam, so I'm just going to open that up and show. So really the, the peaks are still in the same locations um, and it's just reduced the Q of the peaks. It's brought them down, but it's also introduced another one here, um, which isn't good. But you can see that the the anomaly that we saw in the impedance curve at 17 it's just kind of showing up as a little a little blip there if you can see it so not like the other one so the other thing i wanted to show you too is the contribution of the sealed rear chamber um with the with where these frequencies lie so if we go and i open up my impedance test with this is just the driver with the hole with no foam so we can see that it's actually lowered the resonances and i did a calculation and it's lowered them only by 13 percent so the rear volume uh being sealed is just driving up the fs um by 13 percent which isn't a lot i was kind of hoping that it would give you a lot more you know, like if you took, if you made the rear chamber bigger, that it would drop it like by half, but that simply isn't the case. And so that would, that would mean that the compliance of the driver is, is largely due to the surround. So, um, you know, the stiffness in the surround controlling those resonances. So resonant frequencies. Okay. So the next thing I don't want to do is, um, take this apart. Um, and I'm going to modify the diaphragm. So I'm going to glue another diaphragm directly on top of the existing one. And this will serve to increase the mass of the diaphragm and drive the resonant frequency down. So we'll see how far that takes us. The, the uh, glue that I'm going to use is like a spray adhesive and it doesn't, it's like a really tacky substance. And so it doesn't fully cure and it'll be a sort of a constrained layer dampening effect. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Actually, before I do that, I want to just play back some music and I'll try it without the foam and then with the foam. And then I'd just be curious to hear if you guys can actually tell the difference. So I'm going to play the same song that I had played in a previous video. So it's Emily Pinkerton, um, Beautiful Dress. So this is without the foam. Okay, and then this is with the foam in place. Okay, little experiment there. Let me know what you think in the comments on which sounds better with or without the foam.
one thing I noticed when I took this apart, you can see the center slots in the phase plug are actually, there's been a kind of a manufacturing defect there where they're almost fully closed just because of the way the plastic, when it was injection molded, it's, there's some sort of, some sort of issue there. So I'd be inclined to actually open those up to be sim like the same as, as the other rings, the openings there. So just something to point out um, that I think would affect the performance. I got real curious and I just pried out the phase plug itself right out of the compression driver. Um, now I'm getting really curious. I want to maybe do the test without the phase plug. I know the phase plug um, really helps do a lot of things, but I mean, what if we remove it? I'd be really curious to see what happens. So I'm going to put this back together without it and then run a test. Okay, so I put everything back together with the the uh, the phase plug removed. And so I'm just going to play some music. And since FUBAR is already open, I'm just going to hear what it sounds like. So the first thing I realize is it actually sounds pretty good. Um, there's more of an immediate sound to it. It sounds less congested. I don't know what you think and if you're going to be able to tell the difference with the, this is the recording on the iPhone XR, but I mean, it doesn't sound bad at all. So now I'm really curious to hear what the measure or to see what the measurements look like. All right, so this is the best way that I can show the two. This is the completely stock compression driver, and then this is without the phase plug. Um, so you can see that they're very similar, um, almost identical. So um, let's move on to the frequency response and see what the difference looks like. So here's the test results. The red is the stock compression driver and the green is the compression driver with no phase plug so you can see you lose a lot of high frequency energy when that's what the phase plug is doing is it's keeping all the sound waves time aligned so that they work um you know they all come out of the horn throat at the same time without the phase plug everything starts um banging around and you can see evidence of that in the spectrogram plot you can see here in the highs how the sound is just ricocheting off inside that chamber um, underneath the diaphragm so yeah that definitely serves a very legitimate purpose so we'll put it back <laughs> okay so i think what i'm going to do is i'm getting kind of annoyed by the persistent high fs on this and i want to get this driver to be able to play down to 600 hertz so you can see 1k and i want to get it down to 500 hertz and so what I think I'm going to have to do is most of the, well, probably 90% of the, the driver's resonance is determined by the compliance of the surround of, on the diaphragm. So I'm going to have to take drastic action here and I might completely destroy the driver or the diaphragm at least. And I have my X-Acto knife and I'm going to see if I can carefully cut portions of the surround and remove it and then I'm going to measure as I cut so that I don't remove too much um, just to slowly get down to my 500 hertz resonance so here we go fingers crossed All right, it's a work of beauty. So I've cut out four sections of the surround, taken out about 50% of the surround. 
and you can actually feel that it's much more compliant. Does it still work though? <laughs> so let's do an impedance test on it and see where we're at. So I set everything back up. Half the surround is missing and then I ran the impedance test and then this is what we got. So fundamental resonance, resonance is at 530 hertz. Um, things have definitely changed down through here. So let's do a comparison with the stock driver, red being stock. So you can see that uh, that we've um, that resonance that we are getting at 1.2k. It's been driven down, and so we're getting a flatter frequency response. So let's look at the uh, spectrogram. This is the new spectrogram of the the modified driver. And so if we compare to the stock driver, we see the two impedance speaks or impedance. Sorry, it's late. <laughs> and so and so if we go to the modified driver, we can see that that peak is uh, gone, the stored energy there. So um, everything's been driven down to a lower fundamental resonance and um, our breakup mode just looks different I guess like it's it looks better actually this is the stock driver and then modified so um, next thing I'm just gonna play some music and you can hear the difference so I'm gonna bring up now that we have the extended bandwidth, I'm going to bring up Might be a little aggressive trying to get 600 out of it just yet, so we'll take that away. Bring the song back. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this this horn that I've been working on. It's a design that I call the ES600. It's a 600 hertz cutoff, and it's a biradial horn, and it uses the ES flare geometry in both the horizontal and the vertical. And so I'm really hoping that this driver, or sorry, this horn will uh, perform really well. It takes everything that's good about the the Yurichi biradial horns and combines it with you know the modern modern thinking on edge diffraction and lowering the the um, higher order harmonics within the throat etc so the reason I'm trying to get my compression driver down to 600 Hertz is so that it can work with this horn now you can buy like all tech compression drivers and some of the vintage stuff is able to go down that low However, that stuff is starting to increase in price and it's not really, you know, available to everybody. So I want to take a modern driver and look at modifying it, not necessarily cutting this around, but figuring out what you need to do to get that to work. So, okay, that's it for this video. Take care and have a great day. Bye.